This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and yes, mobile. I mean, what could be more mobile than this? I love these things. They're so crazy small, right? You got a roomy pocket. You could put this in there. This is the Intel NUC 13 Pro. Next unit of computing is what NUC stands for, if you haven't heard that by now. So this is a tiny form factor PC. No doubt, it's super tiny. And you've got the power of Intel 13th generation P-series 28-watt processors inside. This is a Core i7 model. And more ports than you could ever hope to see on an ultra booky kind of laptop, which is what you'd usually see that processor in, and it's something this size. We're going to look at it now. So for those of you who do follow NUX, and we've reviewed quite a few and many generations at the, this point, this is the Arena Canyon generation. Now this has Intel 13th generation Raptor Lake processors inside, and again, we have the Core i7 model that is the 1360p with Intel Iris Xe graphics. Do not go looking for dedicated graphics in something this small. So either you already say, I want one of these, or you're saying, what is the point of this? So in case you're saying, what's the point of it? Any place where you don't have a lot of room. You got tiny kids' bedrooms, for example, they need a PC, boom, here it is. You're doing a digital signage, something like that. I, this, has, this is actually Visa mount compatible, so you can mount this to the back of a monitor, right? So that's crazy. Uh, entertainment centers for your media center, you know, all that sort of stuff. Obviously, there's a place for this. And with the amount of ports on this, you can connect it to just about anything. You've got USB-A front and rear. You've got two Thunderbolt ports on the back. Of course, you have a headphone jack on the front. You have two HDMI 2.1 ports, 2.5 gigabit Ethernet on board. So nice. Yeah, there's no mini display port, but you can do that via the USB-C port on it and take care of it. So right away, though, it's set up to do multiple monitors with those two HDMI 2.1 ports on there. Now, this is ever is sold in a variety of ways. Simply NUC sells them. They tend to charge an arm and a leg, and this one is about to come out. Don't think it's actually shipping yet, but you'll soon see it on Amazon, and it'll be two options. Bare bones, which means you put in the RAM and the SSD and provide the operating system, or you can buy it with some of that stuff thrown in already, and sometimes that can be cost effective. Uh, one of the things about the NUC is the upgradability. It's designed for tinkers. Whether you get the teeny one like this, the mid-size ones or the big extreme ones that we reviewed that are little mini gaming PCs, the idea is that you probably want to tinker and you're comfortable with that. Price looks like it's going to be under $1,000 with some modest amount of RAM and SSD and Windows OS installed. Obviously, you can put Ubuntu on this or whatever you want in terms of an operating system. Now, for those of you who do follow these, if you have an Intel 12th gen CPU version of this, not much of a difference going on here in terms of performance, like five, six percent improvement. So not much of a reason generationally to jump on. It's just for new buyers who are ready to jump into one of these or have one that's considerably older and are looking for the latest and greatest inside. Now there is one that's basically a double height version, same footprint, I believe it's going to have tall in the name. That one adds a two and a half inch hard drive bay. Probably most people are not going to be looking for that, especially because you have two M.2 slots inside for SSDs. And we're going to take a look at the internals now. And obviously this is a tiny desktop PC, so it does not have a battery. It comes with a charger, a, a kind of overkill charger. Yes, it's kind of big relative to the size of this. It's 120 watts. I'm not sure why that has so many watts in it, but it does. Ventilation is everywhere on this, so that certainly helps. It might be teeny. You might think, oh my God, it's going to kill itself, but no, we got vents. So to get inside of this, first you can rip the top off. I think they used to offer alternative lids for these. You can still just grab it by the little holes and rip off the top on it. See, not much that's immediately accessible. So we're going to go in from the bottom side, which is where you go to get to the RAM and the SSD. So you've got four Phillips head screws on the corner, and you just lift this right up. So I'm going to unscrew it. Be right back. All right, so I've unscrewed the screws. They are captive screws, which means you don't have to try to pull them completely out of the bottom metal undercover. And here we have here, we got some nice thermal pads to keep the SSD and so on. Cool. So here are the two RAM slots, and Intel sent us to this who has pre-configured, so we have actually have some RAM and SSD in here to run our tests. And here is the main M.2 2280 PCIe 4 SSD slot. And we have a SATA 3 half height slot here if you want to put in a second drive. Now this does have Intel Wi-Fi 6E AX211 with Bluetooth 5.3 as well. And that card 
is socketed and it lives underneath the SSD, which we see a lot in laptops these days too. So in theory, that would be removable and upgradable. So there it is, pretty easy to do. Now, if you want to get into repasting it and all that sort of thing and checking out that fan, more disassembly would be required. But probably given the fact that it thermals on this were just fine, you won't be messing with that at least in the first several years. So there you have it, the power of a more powerful Ultrabook sort of PC, but in this sort of form factor. And for those of you who have a need for this sort of thing, well, Intel is still doing it. Now, one thing to note, though, the fan noise on this, there is some. It's not absolutely silent, okay? As I noted, there is a fan inside here. Now, it's not any louder than your average 13, 14-inch Ultrabook, but it does make a little bit of sound if you're putting it in your media center or something like that. Probably that media center will be like at least six feet away and you won't hear it, but it's something to keep in mind. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.